the exercise lab on Thursday because I cannot finish the uh, modeling part today. So we will uh, postpone <coughs> Tuesday exercise lab to the Thursday. Okay. So also the, on Tuesday, I'd like to split into two groups uh, for the uh, two section of exercise lab. Those who have the class uh, after this class will automatically the first section. So I will call your name at the time. If you have a class, uh, let me know the, in, on Tuesday. Okay. Also, when you come to the exercise lab, uh, you should bring the, your Oracle account number and password. We will start. We will do the very basic uh, the exercise lab to log in the Oracle database server. Somebody, some of the students already asked me which version of Oracle you need to download. You don't have to download any Oracle. Okay? The, in case you need to install the client module, you can download the client module which is the instructed on the exercise lab book. You can download the exercise lab book on, from the class website. It's a PDF file. I will not uh, provide the hard copy because it's 100 something pages. It's explained very, very detailed. So you can uh, even the start your uh, some practice on the Oracle database in advance if you want. Any questions so far? So we are doing the ER modeling. So ER modeling is basically conceptual modeling. So we try to build the uh, inform uh, data group of the data. Okay, conceptually group of the data from information. Okay, at that time. As I mentioned many, many times, you don't need any computer science skill, you don't need any engineering skill, but you need to understand what? The data domain. First, you need to understand what is the characteristic of your the data domain. Then you can build something the, uh, important information that will be managed in the database. To do that, we employ what? Entity relationship model. That means, did you take the object oriented concept? Uh, the object oriented programming? I think there is a 390 or 400, whatever. Did you take it? Yes. Then at the time, what is the basic concept of object oriented programming? It's an object, right? So you define the object, so you define the class. Then, in other words, you see the data as what? Object and class. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. In ER modeling, we will see the data as entity and relationship. Then, there, the model the data based on entity and relationship will easily convert it to database, especially relational database. That's the reason. First, we'd like to group. We'd like to do something. We'd like to organize the information using the check. Entity relationship model. Okay. Let me change the screen. Make sure I have a It's a press PC, but not that time. Still not working. Oh, oh you got it? Yes. It's already working. <laughs> Just let it show you. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So, Oops. Oh, yeah. Here. So, in handout chapter seven and eight handout, so we would like to use the first company database to practice the ER model. Eventually, this company database will be uh, modeled by relational database model. Eventually, will be created on the relational database management system such as Oracle. Okay. So, we would like to use. Uh, Two sample database. One is the company database. Another one is a university database uh, for our practice. Uh, first, the company database. Another important thing that we discussed in last class. Uh, already, I got a couple of uh, students who asked uh, this one. I think the we need something additional information for company database. 
such as the payroll. Or the IT, IT. No, when you model the data for your customer database, you don't have to use your knowledge or experience. First, you need to consider, what you need to consider is requirement from what? The customer, okay? That is the Bible, that is the rule, that is the most important thing when you decide, when you do the modeling. That, if that is, sometimes your customer is not smart or the perfect, at that time you can suggest, you can guess, you can infer. Okay, that is the next thing. So, our customer, <coughs> I think that is very nice, so it's a, very nicely explained about the database that he or she want to build. That is a company database. For example, the company is organized into department and so on, something like that. that the first thing we need to do is what? Find entity. So what is the entity? Entity is the existing thing, like the Lee, James, Potter, Mohammed. It's the existing thing. But by Grouping, we can find the common characteristic, property of each entity, all entities, such as in student, we need the first name, we need the last name, we need the address, we need the GPA. Those are called attributes that these attributes explain about the entity type, actually. Okay? The group of entity will be entity type. Our goal is to find such an entity type. But as I mentioned in the last class, sometimes we can use entity, entity type interchangeably. Okay? But you should know the difference between the entity, entity type, and entity set. But in the practice or project in this class, form, usually we will use entity to represent such a concept. So, what are the entities you can find from company database here? We already defined department, department, project. Who will use rectangle to represent? Okay, so who will use the rectangle to represent entity? For each entity will be described by what? Attribute. Okay. In this example, the name <coughs> and number and location. the manager and the start date and the location. But location is a multivalued one. In case of a multivalued, we will use the double over. I will explain later why we need to differentiate the multivalued one or a single value attribute. Okay? Like this. Another entity you can find is project. So for, to describe the project, we need some unique name, unique number, and single location. What else? Employee will be the next one. The employee will be described by social security number, address, salary, and set and DOB. Okay. Each employee works for one department and several project keep track of the number of hours per employee. Okay. And supervisor. And last one is the dependent. <coughs> Name, sex, DOB, and relationship. Okay? That the possible, most possible entity that you can find. 
That is the first and second step. Binding ent entity, then binding attribute set of attribute that describe each entity. The next job is relationship. So that is the reason that this kind of conceptual modeling is called entity relationship model. Because the idea, basic idea of ER modeling is we can describe not all but most of the information using entity and relationship. For example, the relationship is between two entities. Okay? So, department and employee. Department and employee. Manage. Right? Manage. Okay? What is this? Employee works for many works before that we have the control control, yes. control department and employee works for one department and works on several at that time we will use diamond to represent the relationship for example, this work, where is the number of um, <coughs> hours? This number of hours is uh, for each project. So this time, we can put the hours as the attribute of this one. At the time, it doesn't have to be multi-value. Okay? How many? Lee works on project A 10 hours per week. Lee works on the project B, 20 hours. Okay, so we'd better put this attribute for works on attribute. It's a single over. Okay, anything else? Employee has dependent. Right? To mention the last. Also, supervisor. We have supervisor inform information. First, we Consider supervisor as the attribute of this one, but supervisor. Lee supervised the James. B supervised Jeremy. Lee supervised the Patel. Okay? So employee supervised employee. Anything else? I think too much these are the Relationship that you can find here. Have. What? Yes. Employee has the dependent. Yes. Okay, these are the relationships. Also, each relationship may have attribute. If there is just attribute, you can find the attribute. Somebody may be curious. What about the. Uh, Manager. This is a manager and start day. This one can be attribute of manager, right? It's a manager information. So you can put this one, manager and start day here. But even you can put this information over here or the relationship. But it will be the eventually same. We will learn later. When we convert this conceptual modeling to the database model, at that time, this will be the same. So it's not a problem. Anything else? That's pretty much done up to the relationship. 90% are already done. That is the ER modeling. So ER modeling, one of the benefits, characteristics of the ER modeling is easy. And also, is not from perfectly fit, but mostly fit to relational database model. It's quite similar. Mm -hmm. However, it can be used for other database models. Even this one can be used for software engineering. This one will be implemented in your programming also. So I'm going to define department <coughs> class. I'm going to define the project class in our 
object oriented program without using the database. And that should you, uh, transfer to UML. Yes, right. At that time, UML is a similar thing of the ER modeling, but different. This one, close, similar to database. Even you can use the UML modeling for database modeling. So there are a bunch of different modeling techniques. Okay? Right? Among them, we select ER modeling. One more thing. If you can find any unique value that represents each entity, department may have many entities, right? HR, payroll, department A, department P. Is there anything that can represent the each department, each entity, any attribute, name. Yes, name is unique, right? HR, how many HR departments do you have in your company? Just one department. How many computer science departments at UB? One. 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 It's a unique. At that time, we can <laughs> underline to represent key attribute. This one is called the key, not primary key. I don't know anything about primary key. <coughs> the primary key will be discussed in the database next week. So don't worry, primary. It's just a key attribute. What about the employee? What can be the key attribute? SSN. SSN, social security number. I know some of you are not familiar with the social security number. It looks like the registration number in your country. Many of the country actually assign the one number for each person when they are born, right? Yeah, so right. I have the such a number. That number should be unique. So this is the same thing. Actually, it's not for registration. It's for social security, like the pension, okay? But anyway, social security number can be used for uh, identifying the person employed. <coughs> what about? The project is clearly mentioned in the description. Your customer is very nice. So unique number. What about unique name, unique number? Both of them can be key attribute. How many key attributes? Two. Two. That doesn't mean name plus number. Name is one key attribute. Number is one attribute. So sometimes you can you one entity may have multiple key attribute. You can find as many key attributes as possible. What about the dependent? Do you have uh, any key attribute in the dependent entity? Name? Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm the employee of the, this company. And he is also, he has the son named Mohammed. And I also has the name of son, Mohammed. They can be the same name. Also, if we have the same last name, it will be the same, but different dependent. So we cannot use. But name is close to the key attribute, but it's not unique. At the time, it's called partial key attribute. So we can use the dot line, dot underline, key attribute. It can be key, but Sometimes in special case, it's not a key. What do we call it in the name? The partial. Partial key. So it's a partial key attribute. So this is the one more thing that you need to do. So we did up to the, <coughs> the number three. At that time, the next is who will call this kind of entity as the weak entity in case when the entity does not have key attribute. Okay? What about the other? Department, employee, and project are strong entity. Which means it has key at least one key attribute. So these are not problem. However, the part the dependent is the problem. Why? When I search my son, so my son's name is the same as his son. So we cannot identify the person. 
Christian I ever crossed. Because tomorrow we had uh, faculty research day. Is there anyone who submitted poster? Okay, so um, I'm organizing that poster, so uh, I got a bunch of calls regarding to that poster. Okay, so then, anyway, my job is teaching the database. This is called a weak entity. We do that, we, we'd like to make the weak entity to the strong entity. Okay, how can we do that? Mm -hmm. We should know the who is the employee. So, for example, if even though we have the both both of us has the same name of the son, children, but using my name, using his name, we can identify the department, right? At that time, we can borrow the social security number to here to make the strong entity. Okay, we will learn the, this one later. However, this time we will leave the weak entity as it is. So weak entity will use double rectangle. Then, one more thing. This one is the double diamond. This one is usually called identify relationship. What? As we show. As I said, we need an SSM to identify department, right? Mm -hmm. So this relationship can be used for identifying the weak entity. So this one is called identifying relationship. Okay? So double line. So this is up to number four. The next number five is attribute. <coughs> An attribute. Relationship. Can you remember your uh, elementary math class? I, in my case, I learned the set concept of set. I think third grade or fourth grade. When I asked um, my student, most of the country, they learned the set <coughs> theory, set concept in your upper elementary school, at the fourth grade, the fifth grade, the sixth grade, right? At the time, you may learn the types of the something mapping between two sets. This one is one-to-one -one mapping, right? Mm -hmm. And also sometimes one-to-one. One. So one. this one is one-to many. This one has many, right? Mm -hmm. And also the opposite. So, like the, this one, many to one, or many, many to many. many relationship. As we discussed before, Dr. E.F. Code, who proposed the E relational model, so a long time ago, 69. Do you know what happened during the 1969? No? So, July. I think the July, August, it's a Neil Armstrong, the first land on the moon, right? It's a 69. Why don't you say it? And also another important thing happened in the 1969 was, you should know, the Dr. Lee, Professor Lee Bond. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. E.F. called Nami, Dr. E.F. Code, who proposed the relational model, actually considers such a relationship. The reason why he employed the set theory is what? We can utilize such a mapping concept. So what about this one? So for example, employee and department. We have HR department. We have the payroll department. We have employee one, employee two, employee three, employee four, five. Then employee one, two works for ER at the HR department. And employee. 
The 3, 4, and 5 works for payroll department. This one is called, actually it's not many to one. I usually confuse to this one. This one is one too many. Yes. One department has many employees, many entities. This one is called the one too many. So we can say this uh, works for relationship is what? Many employee works for one department. One too many relationship, different type of. This is called a constraint. For example, manager. Manager is how many manager do you have for each department? Only one. One manager. How many department can you manage as a manager? One department. This one is called one to one relationship. And what about the employee and department? How many dependent do you have? Many. Sometimes none. How many employee can you have as a dependent? Many. So why don't you take a at the time look at the description? Each employee may have a number of dependent. For each dependent, we have the relationship to the employee, one employee. Okay? So we can say this one, one is one employee may many. have many dependent, one to many relationship. <coughs> what about the supervisor? How many supervising? So I'm a supervisor. I can supervise many employees. But I have only one supervisor. So it will be one to many relationship. What else? Control. One department control many projects. And this one is the problem. Employee. One employee can work on many projects. Why don't you read the requirement? And also, one project can have many employees, which means one too many, one too many. many it's, too many. it's called the many too many. So there are three different types of relationships. One to one, one to many, one many to one, and many too many relationships. So you need to identify such a constraint of the relationship. Then the last one is we already identified uh, this, the attribute of the relationship. Also, specifically, only many too many relationship can have attribute, like the hours. Okay. However, one to one ha may have the what is that? It's a name and starting date, right? Mm -hmm. What happened? Professor Lee says the only the many-to-many -many relationship can have the attribute. One to in case of one to one, this is a one to one mapping. There's only one mapping, which means this attribute can be in the department. Mm -hmm. Also, it can be in the employee. It can be in the relationship because it's a one-to-one -one mapping, right? So it doesn't matter where you define the attribute of the, this one, okay? So pretty much that's the all the thing of the entity relationship model. So as you can see, it's a very simple. So that is the benefit of using the entity relationship model. So why don't you take a look at the handout? So page one to three. So figure fourteen it shows the most all the symbols used to, used in the ER model. First one is the rectangle. Rectangle indicate what entity. Okay, double rectangle is a weak entity. And the diamond is a relationship. Double diamond. It's an identifying relationship for what? Weak entity. When you do not find the key attribute. Okay? Then, the attribute we can use over and connected line 
And in case of key attribute, we can use the underline, such as locations or colors, multi-value, we can use double over. There is one more thing is composite attribute. Composite attribute means, for example, I think we have address over here. Okay? So address. For example, 100 University Avenue, the Bridgeport, City 06604. This is the address. If you consider the 1 through 0614 as the one value, address value, it's a single attribute. But I'd like to use different the attribute for string number, string name, street type, name of a city, state name, and zip code. Then you can connect to the address. Like the, this way. This is called composite attribute. Okay, attribute inside the attribute. You can define the attribute. This is called the composite attribute. Somebody may be curious. It's the same thing, address and composite address. How can I define? Which one is better? Which one is better? Composite? Single attribute? Single. It depends. I like the answer, depends. In case you consider the address, entire address, as just one value, you better use this one. But your application, when you analyze in terms of a software engineering, first you need to analyze your application, functional analysis. Then I, you realize, sometimes you need to access string name only. Sometimes you need to access state. Or sometimes you need to access town or city. At that time, you do better, use composite. It depends on your application. Sometimes this one is better, sometimes this one is better. Who knows? You should know. I know this is not easy first time. It's based on experience. Okay? Then, pretty much we covered the most of the topic. After I migrate the UB web mail to the exchange server, it's very slow. Mm -hmm. Very slow. <coughs> First, we identify the entity and attribute. So and this is the output of after identifying entity and attribute. This is the same as this one for your program. So we identify four of them, like this one. In this case, the name of the employee is a composite. This is up to you. Okay? Anything else? Pretty much. And we find the underline, the for key attribute, and so on. So works on. Also the double. Then we identify the relationship. There are three types of the relationship. First one is the many to one, like the many employee works for one department. Even though I'm teach, I have been teaching database for six or seven years, and also I worked for the database um, almost 20 years, still I got confused which one is many, which one is one <laughs> from time to time. So this is my way. Many entity works for one entity. Many employees works for one department. Mm -hmm. This is a many to one relationship. This is many to many and one to one. So these are the all the relationships that you can find. All of them are binary relationship. Binary relationship means one relationship has two entity. What about the supervisor, supervise? So employee, but Employee, supervised, employee. There are two entities, even though names are the same. Okay? 
So we can identify that this kind of thing. Did I explain everything in this year diagram? <laughs> yes? Except one. Actually, two. Yes. Which one? Two lines. Two lines. Line. For this, right? Mm -hmm. I explained, actually, I do not explain about this to explain right now. So, well, what, what can you guess? What's your guess for double line for the relationship? One to many, many. One to many? It's like a one. One line to two line. One to one, one, to one to many. Sometimes so n is double line, sometimes one is a double line. Any guess? Each department should have employee. But each department ha should have a manager, but employee is not always manager. Mm -hmm. Some employees are manager, the others are not. And what else? Project. Department may have the project, but sometimes not. HR department does not have project. Right? Payroll does not. But each project should have controlling department. Then, can you guess what double line means? It's mandatory one. Sometimes this relationship is mandatory, sometimes optional. In case it's the mandatory participation, or in other words, full participation, that's double line. Okay? In case of if we explain that one using the diagram, like the set theory A and B. So we have HR, we have a payroll, we have E1, E2, E3, something like that. If you allow the, this one, this is optional. But in terms of the employee, this is mandatory. So in case of mandatory, it's a double line. Okay, then we can understand. <coughs> this double line definitely. Is there any dependent who do not have any employee works on that company? No. Always there exists the employee who has the, this dependent. That's one thing. There is another thing that I didn't explain explain yet. Dot over, right? So we can see number of employees. Why don't you take a look at the requirement? Do we have the number of employees? Any description in the second page? No, actually not. The, your customer never mentioned about the number of employees for each department. Right? But you can compute how many depart the employees for each department, right? So using the, the, the relationship count all the employees. So in case, even though that is not directly mentioned in the requirement, but if you can derive, if you can compute, if you can infer, that is derive attribute. Actually, we don't need this one, but we can sometimes to simplify the procedure. Otherwise, if we do not have the, this one, whenever we need the number of employees, we need to compute, count. So to simplify, to reduce the time, you can define by yourself. That's your job as a designer, as a, a person who models the database, which way is efficient. So this is called the live attribute dot over. You can use dot over. Okay, then the page three. The last three are the types of relationship. One to one to one, one to many, many to many. And also double line indicate the mandatory participation or plural partic participation or full participation. Okay? You can indicate one too many, one and 
N1. Many of the students actually confuse which one is 1, which one is N. I know you know, but in exam, definitely deduct. The last one is this. Min max. For example, this one. This says works for each department has number of employees. At least one and more than one employees. Is there any limitation, upper limit? No, we don't know. Right? So also, for example, supervisor. So in the policy of the, this company, one employee can supervise maximum 10 employees. There's a maximum. Minimum two, maximum three. However, if you, even though your customer want the limit, such a lower limit, upper limit, but <coughs> using ER diagram, you cannot represent such a detailed specification. So to address that problem, we can specify the how many entity can be involved for this. That is called the min max notation. Let's take a look at this. This one. Manager, it's a one-to-one -one mapping. We learned it's a one-to-one -one mapping. Mm -hmm. And the uh, manager department side is a full participation double line. The employee side is a optional participation, right? But this one is much more clear. Minimum one employee. Maximum one employee for manager. So only one. What about this? Each employee can manage how many? One. Sometimes not if you are not manager. Sometimes one if you are manager. Some more detailed information. It's a min max notation. You don't have to use double line. Instead, min max. What about this one? Can you explain the meaning of this? One each employee works for minimum one, maximum one department. It's a mandatory, even the only one. What about this? Each department has minimum one employee, maximum no limit. Okay? Which means that at least one employee should exist to be a department. So this is the another example of the ER modeling based on min max notation. So it's up to you. So which one you are going to use? Min max notation, sometimes the general ER modeling notation. Okay, but this one is much more clear. For example, I think one of the students mentioned about the, what is a four comma n last time. Who who has that question? Don't be shy. <laughs> Oh, my last class, uh, one of the, you, right? No? Why don't you explain about this one? What does it mean? Four comma n. I will give you back some point. If you answer correctly. Four comma n? Yes, this one. Maybe it can be minimum and maximum the same or? Four comma n. Minimum four, maximum n. What does it mean? So he will answer. <laughs> no? I think that he knows, but he is shy to answer. Anyone else? Yes? Minimum four uh, employee for each department. Mm -hmm. And maximum is like N. So unlimited. Unlimited. Okay, so that is the meaning of the this relationship. Okay. And what else? What about the, this one? 0, n means sometimes no controlling project. Sometimes each there's no limit for number of projects to be controlled. So these are the things. Let me know the bonus point after class. Okay. This is our goal. Okay. For modern.
There are alternative ways. Somebody mentioned about the UML, so we can use the UML for conceptual modeling. I think that you are familiar with the UML modeling for object-oriented concept because UML is a very UML is not the object-oriented concept. UML is the conceptual modeling that fits to the <coughs> object-oriented programming, object-oriented modeling. Okay, so that so if we uh, convert the same model based on the UML, it looks like the, this one. Okay, and this one is another. So far, we have learned about the binary relationship, which means each relationship has two the entity. So somebody still asks, I know there is one supervisor relationship that uses one. It's not one entity. So an employee and employee. Sometimes there might be three or more entity in one relationship. For example, the, this one. Supplier supply the part to the specific project. So we have the ABC supplier company. And the project A needs the cap, so part, okay? So ABC company supply the disk to project A. How many entities? There are three entities for one relationship supply. That is called ternary relationship. Sometimes four, sometimes five, and are possible for one relationship. Unfortunately, Database cannot handle such a complicated relationship. Human being can understand, you can understand, but computer cannot understand such a thing. So, so from time to time, who will convert this one into three binary relationships like this? Supplier supply the specific part. Okay? And supplier supply. I don't know what that is, but supply to the project. Project need use the this part. That makes sense. Or sometimes we can create one more relationship, entity for that relationship, like the supply. So supplier include, mm, how can I say? Supplier is part of a supply entity. And supply entity include a, such a part, supply, and support the project. You can have the three binary like that. Do you think all of three ER diagram are identical, same? Actually not. For example, supplier ABC, supplier ABC <coughs> companies supply this part to project. Yes, that makes sense. What about this one? Supplier can supply bunch of supply, bunch of parts, including this one. Okay? And also supplier, whether or not support the, this project. This project need bunch of the part. But this one only include the, this. That can be supplied by supplier. But this one has more information. Actually, database does don't like such a additional information. Not duplicated one, compact information. They, database like the compact information. So, Sometimes uh, if you can use the, this instead of tonally, you may have the, some unexpected data. This one is the also same, because you can have many entity relationship between the data, between supplier and supply. But that should be connected to only the project. But for simply to simplify the problem, you can use either this one or this one in case of the tonal relationship. This is another example, like the offer. Professor Lee offered a database course in spring 2013, something like that. So to represent that one, even we can add the binary. But our instructor, Professor Lee offer, has been offering many, many courses. But this one is only for spring 2013. So this one is not perfect, but practically can be used. This 
is the older thing, ER model. The next thing, you need to practice. Okay? That's much more important. Understanding ER concept itself, I think the, even the high school student can understand ER modeling concept, sometimes even better. That's the reason in my class, usually undergraduate students, their grade is much better than the graduate students. Really, that's true. So please, that means the graduate student should work hard. <laughs> <laughs> so next thing is the, you need to practice. So I will give the homework. The, if you have the textbook, chapter 7, number 21 and 23. So why don't you solve the problem? I will not accept the typing. Only handwriting will be accepted. 21 and 23. Hello? I'm in class. Watch it. Yeah, yeah. Okay.